taking us. God is taking, He's taking us. us. Higher, higher, higher. He's taking you and me higher. higher. He's taking me higher. I don't know about us. you, but He's taking me higher. I don't know about us. you. He's taking me higher. higher. I don't know about you, Lord. You're taking me, you're taking you, you're taking me. He's taking you, taking me up.
Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so good to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. Just give a big smile to and a hug to two people. Make sure you welcome them to the service this morning before you take your seats. Amen. joining us this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a good day. Amen. Hallelujah. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for switching off your cell phones. Yes. Thank you so much for switching them off. Yes. Do not put them on vibrate. Do not put them on silent. If you are going to be using your phone or tablet for notes, please put it on flight mode. Amen. Amen. There's only one network operational this morning, and it is a heavenly network. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you brought Amen. a visitor, please make sure that they understand that. If they need interpretation, just take them over to that side over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. In this house, we want to make sure that we give Jehovah the honor that is due to his name. Amen. So please, during the service, do not sleep, yes. do not slouch on your chairs, and do not fold your hands. Amen. You may just miss out on what God has for you That's because right. you're not giving God the honor that is due to him. Amen. If an usher does come and correct you, do not be offended. That's we want right. to ensure that order is maintained in the house of Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Are we still together, church? Hallelujah. 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 Amen. If you have any ungodly material, please make sure that you do not dispose of it on your own. You will need right. to book an appointment to see one of the pastors. The office is just through that door over there. So when you, when you sit down with the pastors, they'll assist you with getting rid of it and breaking anything that may be connected to that ungodly material. Amen. Do not do it on your own. Amen. That's right. 
Hallelujah. Amen. King's daughters, are we there this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the beauties about calling on the king's daughters is that every time I look at you, you always have smiles on your faces. Amen. It is absolutely lovely to see. Amen. Hallelujah. And we'll continue even in that same spirit. Tuesday at 12 o'clock, we will be here. Amen. Our Amen. final prayer meeting before our summit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not miss out. Do not miss out. Do not miss out, King's Amen. daughters. It is Amen. just power upon power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. How many are excited to be in God's house today? Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, celebration of wonder. River of Life International brings you a celebration of wonders, our annual conference. This will be a four-day gathering of miracles, power, supernatural encounters with Seventh Portal Period. From the 14th to the 17th of December, morning services at 9 a.m. and evening services at 5 p.m. On Saturday the 16th at 3 p.m. and on Sunday the 17th at 9 a.m. for our special communion service. The sick will be healed and all demonic oppressions shall be destroyed and your long-awaited breakthrough will come to pass. For more information, visit our website at www.jubileeinriveroflife.org. See you there. It's time now for men to arise. Let all those men who have no interest in the kingdom, let them remain behind. I am not here to come and make any truces with anybody. God put me on this planet to take over, not to be taking sides with anybody. I am here to declare and decree to you that true men will arise. You don't have to agree with it, but true men will arise out of this conference. Are we excited about the business oh, yes. meeting? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we will have our wonderful chef cooking for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it will be a time to remember. Hallelujah. Yes. And it will be a time where God will turn around our situations to do with our businesses. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. On uh then on Friday, we have the men's summit. Amen. The men's summit is on Friday. Our men will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Sorry, the men's summit is on Saturday. Hallelujah. On Saturday morning, we have the men's summit. Amen. Amen. So our men will never be the same again. Amen. Right. Come right. 2018, we will have a different set of men. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. amen. And then on Sunday, we have our celebration of wonders. Right. We will be amen. celebrating what God has done for us. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. amen. And we will have communion of wonders. Amen. Mm. Come ready. Mm. Come ready spiritually to receive. Amen. amen. Do not just come in, do not happen into the conference, amen. But come ready spiritually, amen. Say, Lord, please rekindle my fire, rekindle my passion, hallelujah, so that you are not left behind, amen. amen. Hallelujah, and you remember that he said that you get five people that you want to pray for for the business breakfast, amen, yes. and invite them, amen. Hallelujah, amen, amen and amen. amen. And um, there is also going to be a prophetic seed. Amen. But I'm not going to talk much about that because um, Pastor Takawira will take us on. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're planning to get married, December is a time of weddings. Amen. 
So if you are planning to get married, hallelujah, please register six months in advance. Amen? Register six months in advance so that your preparations and everything are done in a manner of excellence. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. This is to ensure that preparations and even your, 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 your staying together because um, wedding is not just the wearing the gown and, 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 and the vows, but it is after. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that after you are married, then you can sit in the home and you can understand one another. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have anyone celebrating birthdays or special events today? Anyone celebrating? There's a hand there. Okay. Um, please. Hallelujah! May I ask those that are around here to celebrate with her, please? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! It's her birthday. Amen. Amen. Ru. Addis birthday tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It was her birthday on Friday. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There's a hand there. It's a birthday to oh there are so many birthdays today. It's Pastor Josh's birthday today. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow, congratulations. Amen. Yes, sir. It was on Wednesday. Okay, it was another birthday there. Amen. Oh, there are so many birthdays. Let us, I think let's sing happy birthday for the birthday people. Amen. to testify. That's another form of celebration. Amen. Hallelujah. We have Nomvula Sitole, Miss LCRP, and Koko Makalima. They have testimonies. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to testify of God's goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Morning, church. Morning. Uh, for the first time, I walked 40 days of fasting and praying. Amen. 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 But from twenty-five November, for the past fifteen years, we have formalities and But twenty-five November, we have was all over. And Amen, amen, amen. And the wedding is around this time next year in Nigeria. So I'm on my way to Nigeria. <laughs> then Izolo, especially let up a portion, two girls, Valo Choliwe, one Exen or ten, Omunye Emini. Amen, 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 amen. Um, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But girl, next week, Saturday, I'm on my way to Harare. Woo! Thank God for everything. Amen. 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 No. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. of the Lord. I was long time preaching gospel and when I was preaching to people, people they were not coming to church and they were not interested to what I said. But today finally I bring uh, my sheep to church. Amen! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Amen! God is opening doors. We hear doors of marriage. Lapo wabusitu agula ba kwenyana. Namsanje gula ba kwenyana. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And jobs are opening. Oh yes! Hey! Amen! 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 My God! My God! Hallelujah! This God! This God! Hallelujah! Amen! 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 God is so good to us. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen! Um, this announcement is to all the LTS and ministers, amen. All LTS and ministers, please, after the service, go to that back table, hallelujah, where you will get your letters, amen. All LTS and ministers, please, go, go see somebody will be standing there at that back table, hallelujah, amen. amen. So you can get your letters, amen, amen. hallelujah, amen. Um, yesterday we had a lovely time with the children. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We would like to say a big thank you to the children's church teachers. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For what they presented yesterday. Amen. It was excellent. Amen. Amen. The levels shifted from the last Christmas carols. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so the children are doing a splendid job in their children's church arena there. Amen. So we'll ask Kokomkwananzi to bless these children. They did a splendid job yesterday. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning, morning, morning. <coughs> morning. Morning. Ah, Siambong Jehovah, Siambong Tiko. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. 
Aleli langa la lam shasi zahwe nge kamali ga chesu. Baba si zasleta ugubonga lo baba za ubukulu bako. Na mpaba ntua na vanginya na nkosia. Aba ntua na vatanda wena. Aba ntua na vazu wena. Aba ntua na vasebenzela wena. La lam shanje baba si abonga. Si suele imilo mwezi kulungwane. Esu nga kubonga ngayo Jehova. Wena ugubalusu wetu. Asigu suela. Usilali se machele na shtaza. Baba senzele gashe nga bantuana. Senzele gashe nga bantua betu. Ngeka mali ga chesu. Baba utembe gile. Age kofana nawe. Aga kofuze wena. Tu inkosi ya makosi. Uli kawe la makawe. We thank you Lord. We bless you Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Even as we get into a time of worship, it is my desire that we become one with the Lord and just give our all to Him, surrender all that we are to Him and just worship Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just begin to worship Him in your own way right now. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus.
worship where you are. In your own way, raise your voice and worship. Don't wait for somebody else. Open your lips and worship. He's worthy in this place. Say over Jairo. That's right. That's right. Just worship God. He's worthy. Hey, Sakaria, Saka. Wonderia, ta 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 ta. Leta, leta. Come on, open your mouth. Worship God. Worship God. He's worthy. He's worthy. everyone to worship because we are at different places but if you have an understanding of who God is in your personal life if you have an understanding that you are alive because of his grace your worship is not defined this morning just worship God where you are oh. from the bottom of my heart I give you worship
where you are.
salvation of days is old as you are as old as you are you will never change of days and say as old as you are as old as you are change the direction of our meeting and do a couple of things before we hear the word. Amen. Amen. Shall we resume our seats? Hallelujah. I would like to appreciate our spiritual parents in their absentia. Amen. But this will take me to my next announcement. Our dad sent his greetings from his retreat. He took time to record a video which we are going to watch. Therefore, I will ask the musicians to go and take their seats so that they may be able to partake. Hallelujah. The video. Amen. I would request that we attentively listen because there is some wonderful teaching, some wonderful revelation from the video. Hallelujah. Then we will give of our offering and sacrifices after the video. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good to see you all. Um, I am getting a little bit of rest. Mama is not here for now. She is gone gallivanting somewhere with um, uh, some of her sons and daughters. Uh, something that's been uh, in my heart for a while now, I did allude to it a short while ago, and that was the issue of honor. We are coming now uh, to the family conference, and there is just concern in my heart uh, because I honor my spiritual father, Dr. Paul and Angel. Whenever I travel, I meet with him and I honor him. Uh, and there is a challenge that exists right now because honor has been meant in the church to mean just the giving of financial gifts. And, but honor goes much, much further and more than just the giving of financial gifts. Uh, there is a dimension when we are looking at scripture, the dimension of honor and the dimension of dishonor. Uh, Ham saw his father naked and he went and he recruited his two brothers, uh, Shem and Japhet. The two brothers having heard that their father was naked, put a blanket, walked backwards, covered their father. They did not even include him because his actions were preposterous. Today, as we speak, Ham's offspring are slaves and they are low uh, uh, wake people because of the sin of their father. 
I am concerned in my heart and I want to address this thing because as we come now, we are a, just less than a week away from the conference. I want you to be ready. I want the families to be ready. I want individuals to be ready. I want single people to be ready. I want children to be ready because if we can understand what I did not know as I was growing up even as a, 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 a much uh, older person, I believe our lives can be set up spiritually in such a way that we, we prosper in what we do. There are different categories of honor that we find in the Bible. The Bible speaks in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. It says, honor all men, but especially the king. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, honor the church elders, those who work well in your midst. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, in verse 1, it says we must honor our employers, those who we work with. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 3, the Bible says we must honor widows. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says we must honor our spouses. Yes, our spouses. The very people who, who so many times we, 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 we abuse either because of cultural upbringing or whatever, the Bible says we must honor them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 23 to 25, it says we must honor those things or those people who do not look worthy of honor. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 32, the Bible says we must honor the aged. It, the biblical injunction is that when the aged even entered a room, younger people were meant to stand up in order to show that respect. I pray that for you, for your family, for your children, that honor will become a very critical aspect of the way you live and the way you raise up your children. Now, what does the word honor mean? The word honor it means in Greek to fix a value. In other words, to place importance, to place evaluation. When there is no honor, a value is taken. In other words, the opposite of honor is actually to despise. So when you do not honor what you are supposed to honor, you despise it. When it has been put there by Jehovah, it brings calamity into your life. Next week on Sunday, as we do the, 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 the prophetic seed, I don't want you giving if you do not understand. I do not want you uh, bringing a gift that is not honor. If it is just money, do not give it until you understand. I'm teaching you this today so that there is a, a, an understanding of this. So, there are many things that come into our lives, teachings which are designed to change our lives. Now, I have seen this work uh, in the way my relationship is with my spiritual father and a, 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 a great man he is, someone I absolutely look up to and the type of relationship I have with him is, is the sort of relationship I want you to experience the blessing of it, the opening of the doors and the gates of it, uh, because if this does not happen, we set up roadblocks in our own lives. Now, few things I want us to take note of. How do we practice honor? There are four ways we practice honor. Number one, by obeying the teaching and instruction of those who are our spiritual leaders. Number two, by relating and espousing the values that they live by. It is not honor to live our lives a, a, in a way that contradicts the values of the people who are our teachers. Number three, by serving them in, the, in, in, in their lives. When any aspect of honor is violated, there is no honor, even though part of the honor is being done. So now, you may give or go and serve a materially a man of God, but when you are speaking against them a, behind their backs, that honor is already immediately destroyed. Ham obviously did not dishonor his father in any way, but the dishonor was there in his heart because when the opportunity came, he dishonored him. Number four, by upholding their values and their God becomes your God. What are the examples of honor we find in the Bible? Number one, we find Joshua honoring Moses. Numbers chapter 27 from uh, uh, verse 15. We find in 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 11, Elisha 
seven Elijah. Uh, and we find when the king comes in 2 Kings 3.11, says, but Jehoshaphat says, is there not a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire? Yeah, I have heard from all these other prophets, but is there not a prophet of the Lord? And one of the king's servants answered and says, here is Elijah, the son of Shaphat, who poured water on the ends of Elijah. His honor was not in being able to prophesy like Elijah. It was in that he saved Elijah. Number three, the disciples served the Lord and by default received the same grace. We find this in John chapter 20 uh, from verse 19 up to verse 24. Number four, the centurion who built a synagogue. It says in Luke chapter 7 verse 2, And the certain centurion servant was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. When he heard of Jesus, he sent him unto the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servants. When they came to Jesus, Jesus then besought him instantly, saying, or they besought Jesus. It was the elders of the Jews who said he is worthy because he has built us a synagogue. Now, a centurion, a foreigner, built a synagogue where were the people of God. <laughs> Sometimes it takes an outsider to bring honor. When people inside dishonor what God has granted to them, so what are the outcomes of honor? What are the things that happen when there is honor? Number one, there is sonship that comes out. It is impossible to have to honor a man or a woman of God and not become a son. Number two, the release of a mandate. Uh, uh, we find in Joshua, uh, sorry, in John chapter 7 from verse 1, how the brothers of Jesus despised the ministry of Jesus. Uh, but yet those who honored him the disciples, they received that because they honored him. Number three, there is the release of a promise. Luke chapter 24, in verse 29, says, Behold, I said, the promise of my father uh, is then upon you, but wait in Jerusalem. You know honor because the people with honor are people that are patient. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, Paul says, they were assembled together with them. And he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. If there is honor in your life, there is a promise that is coming to you. He, 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 we find it fulfilled, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, and chapter 2, from verse 1. Number 4, there is the assurance of the continuance of a legacy. You look at the life of Moses. You look at the life of Elijah. They didn't die with the grace God had placed upon them because of the fact that they had someone who honored that grace and therefore God extended or continued it upon them. What are the benefits? And I want to end this. Number one, there is mentorship uh, that releases what could not have been received otherwise. You, the story of Joshua and Elisha that I am talking about. If you are here, you are listening to me, you are hearing what I am saying, and there is honor in your heart. Uh, whoever you are honoring, I stand here as an oracle of Jehovah to tell you whatever grace Jehovah has placed upon their lives, and even more, because you are listening to me just as a man. But yet, there is a calling Jehovah has placed upon your life. There is giftings God has placed upon you. There is anointings God has placed upon you. You receive not only what you already have, but what I have in my life. And I'm excited about that. And that is why I never believe I should raise people who are at the same level as me. I believe I must raise people who are greater than me because it is me and them added together rather than me just being myself. Secondly, there is grace that releases revelation to receive greatness not accessible to others. The one that honors, it does not remain themselves. They are themselves and what they are honoring. Number three, there is grace to become what one could have never dreamt of in their wildest dreams. Elisha was a farmer, did not think that we would be preaching about him today. Joshua, he, we do not know what he was doing. What we know is he, he, it was a, a, a Moses who then sends him and makes him the commander of the armies. He, because of honoring a grace, because of honoring oil, a rakata, shandiyala, baby, hasakata. Number four, there is the shortening of a training process. Moses was trained by God eight years. Eli, uh, uh, Joshua, 40 years for the same announce, uh, uh, assignment. Yet Moses did not enter, but Joshua entered. And I prophesy upon you right now, 
that whatever it is that has taken me eight years, it shall take you less because of the spirit of honor. Number five, the exemption from a training process. Because, uh, 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 sorry, uh, exemption from the pains of life that a mentor has already paid for. The things that I have had to learn the hard way are distilled to you in a matter of minutes and hours. You cannot go right now to the internet and hear what I am teaching you right now. You may hear snippets of it. And I challenge some of you, go and seek. So I am distilling to you now what God has taught me in years. And most of it by pain, by error, by, by, by many mistakes, by messing up. But you are receiving it in a matter of minutes. Number six, humility that keeps one grounded because of the presence of a godly mentor. If God has ordained you to be a part of this commission, God has set me in your life to be a standard. Now, not everybody is going to appreciate that or want that. So some people may, may live going from their own ministries. If that's what God has said, then that is fine. And uh, my prayer is that they would uh, succeed. But the majority live because they do not have the discipline to sit under a disciplined mentor. People are looking for cheap and people are looking for come easy. Number seven, there is a, the presence of an overarching voice that speaks into every sphere of life. I am not here to be your preacher. I am here to be your spiritual father, to stand and speak, to commend you when you do right, to rebuke you when you do wrong, to bring discipline in your life when it is needed. Number eight, there is a preserving presence that sustains one in the battles of life. You cannot die when you are submitted to a mentor of fire. It is not possible to just submit to calamity. We, if the calamity is not on the mentor, how can it be on the mentee? <clears throat> Number nine, an identity that opens doors that are closed to others. Today, by reason of the person who overacts over our ministry and overacts over me, there are doors that open naturally. Nobody has to kick them. Nobody has to look for a, a, a master key. No, they open on their own. Number nine, there is an identity that opens doors that are close to others. It, it, it is that identity. It's an ID. It, 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 it's like a, 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 your, your card for the ATM. You don't have to be smart. You just need to know the PIN number. And lastly, a standard already established that holds you up to excellence. When you are in our ministry, we are a ministry of excellence. We don't do gimmicks and we don't do a, a funny things. And I pray for you tonight that as you prepare, that it is not a preparation that you do on your own. I have had to rebuke men who, when they come to church, they, they, they are on their own, their wives are on their own, their children are on their own. That is a, a, a spiritual disorder. I pray that the family would get together. That as we prepare, I, I, I do not believe in my life that we have ever been where we are right now. The difficulties of this year, the challenges that we faced, were not challenges because we did something wrong or because we were, we, 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 or God was punishing us. No, it, it was disciplining us to stand in the place of authority. And so I stand with you today, stand in that place and your place shall be established. I hope the, the video will be circulated to us so that we may really sell and really sell. It's quite a foundation. Hallelujah. Unfortunately, there was no interpretation, but I hope it will be fixed when we get to circulate the video. At this juncture, I'll ask the praise and worship team to help us even as we give of our offerings. Hallelujah. The spoke of honor, the types of honor, how to honor, the benefits of honor, and your giving financial, it's just one facet of honor. But he went on to say something amazing. That when one aspect of honor is not being observed, there is no honor, even when there are other facets of honor being observed. Hallelujah. He went on to speak about the, the, prophetic, the prophetic appreciation which we are going to do on the conference day. 
that don't give if you don't understand what it is. I hope by now we all know, appreciate that when we are giving of that prophetic seed, we are appreciating and honoring our spiritual father for his authority over our lives. He said he's not our preacher, but he is our spiritual father. I am the preacher. Hallelujah. We honor the spiritual father upon our lives. Amen. I request that we collect our offerings. From glory to glory God is taking us God is taking us from glory to glory from glory to glory God is taking us He's taking us He's taking us Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. My Father, this morning we come before your throne of honor in the mighty name of our Savior and our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you even for your hand which is upon our individual lives, for your hand which is upon our different families. Father, we thank you even for your hand which is upon this ministry. Father, even as we go into this celebratory service, I thank you, my Father, that we shall leave this place with the revelation which has carried us into another level. Father, even as we prepare for the celebration of wonders, I thank you, my Father, that it shall not be an event. My Father, I thank you that beginning now, your grace shall start to reverse that which the natural laws had declared impossible. Father, I thank you for every issue in our midst right now that it is being dealt with by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, my Father, that no one individual shall leave this auditorium the same. I thank you, my Father, that because of our honor, because of our obedience, our lives will never be the same. I thank you, my Father, for giving us the authority to rule, the authority to dominate. My Father, I pray even for our spiritual fathers, I thank you, my Lord, for such wonderful spiritual parents. I pray, my Father, that your hand may continue to be mightily upon them, that you may continue to see them through as they carry your vision. I pray, my Father, even for the pastorate of the ministry. I pray for each and every leader in the ministry. My Father, I pray for each and every individual in the ministry. I pray, my Father, that they shall continue to grow from one level of glory to another level. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We may resume our seats. Thank you, music team. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this meeting where we are going to set the tone for the celebration of wonders, where we are going to create capacity for the wonders which are going to occur. We, before I proceed, I just want to appreciate once again our daddy, the pastor of this assembly, even for giving me the opportunity to minister today. I would also want to appreciate our mother, 
Mama Piri, even in absentia. I would want to appreciate all the pastors. I would appreciate all the leaders and everyone who made this service possible. The ones who did the deco, the sound guys, the musician, and you for inviting someone and reminding someone to be on time. Even your wife reminding them to be on time. Hallelujah. It's not an easy task to stand before you. Amen. I would like to appreciate our brethren from Baram Green. Hallelujah. This is our meeting today. I'm part of you. Hallelujah. The only thing which gives me confidence to come and minister is because I will be appointed by dad to say, you are ministering this Sunday. That's the only thing which encourages me to say, no, do it. Because I know that having a spiritual father above my life puts me in a safe position. He speaks to his God. I speak to my God. But when he sends me to come and speak, he would have dealt with his God and his God would have allowed him to send me. On my own, I wouldn't agree. Hallelujah. I will be done in the next one hour. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you when I'm about to start. I ministered in Baram Green two, two, three weeks ago. And I had promised them that I've got three messages for you. I only managed to do one. Hallelujah. So don't think that I'm buying time. I'm actually finishing off a message which I started at BG, then I will start the JRC one. We ministered on a life of continuous victory. Amen. I'm starting now. We are continuing in the same vein, ministering on a life of continuous victory, but today we are looking at the area, at the area of turning around Hallelujah. Hopeless situations. A life of continuous victory, but turning around hopeless situations. Amen. I would have liked to say turning around seemingly hopeless situation. Because with our God, there is no situation which is hopeless. Hallelujah. And the mandate does not allow us to label any situation hopeless. We are not allowed to graduate any situation and give it a title that this is now a hopeless or an impossible situation. But it is needful that we correct some errors. Hallelujah. Each and every Sunday, the word is shared. And we tend to develop some elements of conformity. In as much as we bring notebooks, in as much as we write notes, we will be taking notes in a conforming manner that we are supposed to do it. And we develop some complacency that we will always hear the word. If I miss it this week, I will hear it again on Wednesday. If I miss it live and direct, I will listen to the audio. Hallelujah. But ladies and gentlemen, conformity and complacency, they are the cement of religion. The more you pour, the more religious you become. Romans chapter 12, verse number 2 reads and says, be not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. This is a common scripture which I always read before I start ministering. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. 
victory will only come and will only be continuous when you are riding upon the perfect levels of the will of God. Hallelujah. Something which is good is all right. Something which is acceptable is palatable. Amen and amen. Allowing your family to come to church is good. Not bashing your wife is good. Coming to church as a family is good. But what now is the perfect will of God? The perfect will of God is that we live a life of continuous victory. Amen. We laid a foundation in BG when we ministered there that why do we need victory? Why are we in a battle? Amen. The challenge with many good Christians, we demote ourselves to the fleshly levels. You tell yourself that for as long as I am not stealing someone's anything, I am living in the good will. I am okay. But let me tell you today, so that I may have your attention. Hallelujah. Inasmuch as you prepare that I'm going to celebrate my son's graduation, my daughter's wedding, you prepare. Hallelujah. I have a 10-year-old daughter. I'm already preparing for the wedding. But the devil has been preparing for your downfall before you were born. Hallelujah. For time immemorial, the devil had an issue with you. We shared in PG, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, when the Lord declared that, let Moyo have dominion. Hallelujah. The devil engaged into a war for a mode to bring you down. So, the devil is preparing your what? Your downfall. Whether you like it or not, there is an evil day for you on the way. It's scriptural. The only thing is when we read scripture, we do selective digestion or selective attention. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Is it there? Hallelujah. We are told, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So an evil day which is on the way to come and meet you, it's something which is biblical. It's something which is inevitable. But what do we do as children of God? We arrest that evil day before it arrives. We prepare for that evil day before it arrives. So that the day it arrives, we step on it and it becomes a platform for our success. As Dedu was concluding, he said, 2017, we have been faced with a lot of challenges. Not because God was punishing us, but God has been training us. Hallelujah. So there's an evil day on the way for you. Amen and amen. A life of continuous victory. Victory is not an event. Some of us, we are in our relaxation mode, the safe mode. We are waiting for Thursday that we start the excitement, that we start praying in tongues, that we start rebuking the devil, that we start demanding our blessings from Jehovah because it's conference time. No, it's wrong. I like the theme for this year's conference. Celebration of wonders. Some wonders will okay then, but others should have okayed, and they should continue to okay. Hallelujah. So today, we are going to turn around every hopeless situation. Amen and amen. Now I believe that I have your attention, auntie. 
at times we get carried away by our material comforties. Our material possessions will act as a buffer. But let me tell you one thing. Spiritual things cannot be replaced by material things. Issues which need to be dealt with spiritually cannot be, cannot be replaced by material things. A huge financial sacrifice without a spiritual backup will not avail anything. Hallelujah. If it did avail anything, every politician would be spiritual. Every politician would be spiritually successful. Hallelujah. Hopeless situations just to awaken other people would think everything is all right. What a lot of people do is when we are faced with a situation which is proving to be impossible, or when we know that if I take this route and persist in this route, I am going to meet a difficult situation, we avoid, we use avoidance. Hallelujah. There are a lot of people, a lot of ladies, a lot of men, who have come to realize that Mary, I lack the testimony which was given. Marriage after marriage. But the people who got married don't come to this ministry. I would like to thank God that she stood proxy for them and turned around the situation. We face a hopeless situation in the area of marriage as a family. You are sure the devil is definitely whis whispered into your ear that you, your family, is not the type which stays in marriage. So what do you do? You avoid that root of marriage. Because you don't want to find yourself standing face to face with an impossible situation. You don't want to find yourself standing face to face with a hopeless situation. Hallelujah. But as I said earlier on, the devil had an issue with you before you were born. When Jehovah declared that, I want you to dominate, I want you to rule on this earth, the devil had an issue. So the devil will bring hopeless situations in your lives. A hopeless situation is a situation which comes and grip an area of your life and bring an imbalance into your life. Those who have done leadership training, we are aware of the will of life. Which is supposed to go on smoothly. There's the spiritual, the physical, the material, the financial, the family. Hallelujah. For you to prove from the good to the acceptable and to reach the perfect will of God for your life. Your will of life should travel smoothly. It means that to ensure that we have a smooth sailing will, but the devil will come and grip maybe the finances and tell you that your finances are hopeless. So you throw away your dreams of possessing a house. Hallelujah. You tell yourself that, ah, I want to build my two-roomed flat here, go away. And you make it a reality. You repeat to your, it to yourself over and over again. That Aitinama Shona Siake town. We built a car. But the reality is, the devil is whispered to you, good eye, when it comes to the finances, Hopeless. And you look into the family tree, you can prove to the fifth generation that none of your family members have ever excelled in that area. Today we need to turn any situation which you had deemed hopeless. Hallelujah. 
So I'm saying, some of us are telling ourselves that no, we don't have hopeless situation because we have created a comfort zone for ourselves by telling ourselves a lie. That I, I having a house in town, no, it's not my thing. Hallelujah. Avoidance will not take you into your destiny. Avoidance who take you away from your mandate and your purpose. A little compromise who take you off tangent. Hallelujah. Turning around any hopeless situation. I hope I have everyone's attention now. We are now aware that the devil is cooking an evil day for you somewhere, somehow. But it is your responsibility to arrest, to put it not under house arrest, under Chikurubi arrest, before it arrives. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you the ingredients of how we arrest the evil days later on. Amen and amen. So as I was saying, we have lied to ourselves, we have compromised, we have given up on situations which we have calculated and projected and proved that this situation, I will not come out of it. Amen. One lesson number one, we should never label a situation impossible. When you minister to people, many times they tell you that I've done everything possible. Isn't it? I've gone to every possible place. But the question is, the possible things which we have done are possible according to who? Hallelujah. In any matter, when you say possible, the possibility part is according to your level of revelation. And naturally, men are not meant to endure anything which is not nice. Hallelujah. That's why just sitting down to take notes, they start sleeping, aren't they? But I always ask myself, people would go to a band, to a disco. There are no chairs and benches there. They would endure the whole night, aren't they? Because it tickles their flesh. So when we say, I have done everything possible, Possible according to who? The challenge to us today is let's increase our level of revelation. Let's increase our capacity. Let's increase our tolerance ability. Hallelujah. For one of time, I will go straight into the ingredients of turning around Hopeless situations. Number one. Point number one. As Christians, as children of the Most High God, we need to keep our eyes stayed on the Lord. Hallelujah. Whether be it a wedding, be it a funeral, be it a fight, ask yourself, are my eyes stayed on the Lord? We worship God for who he is, not for what he can do, neither for what he has done. A blessing 
should not precede your love for Jehovah. Your love for Jehovah should precede the blessing. Many times we find ourselves trapped because we want to see what God can do for us and we can thank him for that. But we need to keep our eyes stayed on the Lord. Isaiah chapter number 26 verse number 3. I will be reading from you. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Verse 4. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Ingredient number one, on turning around hopeless situation. Keep your eyes, keep your mind stayed on the Lord. This is the major, major. Hallelujah. A lot of people, when you come to the service, even as I'm ministering right now, if you are a visitor, the prophet is the one who was speaking on the video. I'm not the prophet. We wait for the opportunity which excites us. We wait maybe for the prophetic moment. Hallelujah. But when the word of God is being ministered, we are absent-minded. But scripture says, what shall the righteous become if the foundations are removed from them? When your mind is not stayed on the Lord, your mind is on what God is going to do for you. As we go into this conference, we are going to miss a lot of things because you are waiting for that opportunity when the pastors will come into the congregation and start prophesying and ministering on us. But the word which could have opened up your revelation and your insight could have been shared on Friday. Because your mind is not stayed on the Lord. Your mind is stayed on what the Lord can do for you. There is a Thin line of Atandekayo separating what the Lord does for you. Your gratitude for what the Lord does for you. And your love for the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When someone is testifying, you can pick that this person is excited because of the benefits which came, but is not excited of the Lord. And you are in a trap. Because the Lord does not call you from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light so that he can start blessing you. We were blessed before we were born. We begin to walk in our blessings. Hallelujah. So if you come into his kingdom of light and you start to expect blessings to start falling from Jehovah, you put yourself in a snare. Because if you stay for one month without a blessing, you will find the sheaf is no longer there. The sheaf is gone. You come and you get healed. And you are healed because you were healed before you fell sick. Hallelujah. Are we aware of that? We were healed before we were born. Healing is not a divine afterthought God does not realize that the devil is inflicting us when we're in existence. He knew infliction will come. And he provided for the healing. So your healing, you grab it. Hallelujah. But when you come to church for the healing, when you come to church for the blessing, and you do not realize it, you vamos, you disappear. Hallelujah. And the devil likes people who appear and disappear. Because when you disappear, you are walking into his zone. Hallelujah. There's no place which is safer than the house of God. When I say the house of God, I don't mean the auditorium. I mean the family of God. 
where you partake of the spiritual food, where you are made to grow every hour. Hallelujah. Out there, if you decide that I will get my sermons from television, that television was invented by the devil. Hallelujah. Let me show you. They are pastors. They are bishops. Who missed the purpose? Who missed the vision? Who don't appreciate the mandate for Jehovah? The mandate of continuous victory. Hallelujah. Pastors who are now ministering things which tickle our flesh. Because they don't appreciate that when you come here, it's now your business to start growing. Hence we see corrupt business. People love those churches. And they sponsor those pastors to be on TV. And those pastors start ministering things which are foreign unto us. Hallelujah. So I'm saying, blessing should not precede your love for Jehovah. Your love for Jehovah should be unconditional. Because our God is not an optional God. Hallelujah. The singer Benjamin Dube is a worship song which has got some wrong wording to say, God, we thank you. We tried you and you found you worthy. We do not try Jehovah. He is a sovereign God. Hallelujah. So, have your mind stayed on Jehovah. Amen and amen. Do not be deceived. Like Ubabu Nebuchadnezzar. When you see yourself flourishing on this earth and assume that all is well. Hallelujah. We hear Nebuchadnezzar now narrating a scary dream which occurred when he was in the deepest pit of his deception. Daniel chapter 4 verse 4. He says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Hallelujah. When your life starts flourishing, do not be deceived and take away your mind and your eyes from Jehovah. Do not be carried away like Samson. Samson became so influential, became so authoritative that he took his mind and eyes away from the source of his authority. We then hear Samson crying later on saying, Jehovah, remember me. If you get carried away by Tandekai, you go far and far and far and far and far. Jehovah never forgets you. It is you who forgets Jehovah. Samson cried, Jehovah, my God, remember me this once. I pray today that you will not get yourself into a situation where you pray that the heavens remember you. Amen. Hallelujah. The heavens should keep a record of you because you are a kingdom-minded person. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes stayed on the Lord. Do not panic like so. Hallelujah. We are told that Saul was a fairer guy. He automatically qualified to be a king. Hallelujah. When Jehovah anointed him, he did not shift his focus from his bodily build to Jehovah. He maintained the focus on his body build. He thought every battle he was winning was because of Jehovah. So he is a person who was not obedient. We see when Samuel told him to wait for him so that he can come 
and offer a sacrifice before a battle. When Samuel delayed, so panicked. Because his eyes had not been on the Lord. And he offered a strange sacrifice. Hallelujah. Keep your mind and your eyes stayed on the Lord so that you may not panic in the evil day. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. As you, as you have received Christ the Lord, so walk you in him. Hallelujah. If we are to sum up the number of people who came and gave their lives to the Lord, this year alone, we will fill double this auditorium. True or false? If we are to analyze the people who got excited when they got born again, they began growing in the Lord, they began serving in the ministry, they began evangelizing, but they are no longer doing that today. We may again fill this auditorium. I once spoke that your, the place where you sit physically in church, hallelujah, there's an issue that you are coming late. And there's an issue that uh, you avoid to come and sit here. You want to go there. Speaks of the is directly proportional to your excitement for Jehovah. Hallelujah. So I would want to encourage Abomoyo Lava, Licho Evangel. I'm excited. I saw quite a number of people. Ukumalo. Labo Urutendo, who were away for some time. Labo Mo, you can't say it. Lalema Kaya, it's good to see you. Those who have been boarding school, we thank Jehovah for preserving you. Hallelujah. As you have received Christ, so walk you in Him. Hallelujah. I said conformity and complacence are the cement of religion. Complacence is I now know how they do it. I can come in any time and join in. Conformity, I have to do it because they want it done that way. Hallelujah. We go and evangelize because the prophet said, I will be there. Or said, do it. That's conformity. You are not walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. There's a thin line between religion and spirituality. When you are not walking with the Christ, there are some markers which are easy to identify. We ignore the probings of the Holy Spirit when you are no longer walking with Christ. And when you are no longer walking with Christ, your mind has been shifted away from Jehovah. Mind you, we have only one God. Once your mind is taken away from him, it's already in the world. Hallelujah. Colossians, shall we finish the scripture? Colossians chapter 2 verse 6. <clears throat> As you have therefore received Christ the Lord, so walk you in him. Rooted and built up in him. And established in the faith. As you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you with philosophy and vain deceit. Philosophies are nice words, nice statements, nice rhyming statements. And our Christian television channels are full of philosophies. Philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, 
after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Hallelujah. I am laboring this. Challenge yourself that I want to take my mind back to Jehovah. I want to keep my mind stayed on Jehovah. When your mind is stayed on Jehovah, it means that you are now prioritizing the kingdom things. If you go into your business, they will know you as a kingdom person. You will not manifest first as a shrewd business person, but you will manifest first as a God-loving man who is doing well in business. When you go on that roadblock as a, as a traffic cop, you are not going to manifest the traffic cop until 5 p.m. when you are coming for prayer. But you are going to manifest a man of God who is a good traffic cop. Hallelujah. I'm not saying don't be bribed. Bribes will automatically go away. Hallelujah. I'm saying in every arena, every facet of your life, seek to have your mind so much stayed on Jehovah that the thing which manifests first is the godliness in you before the naturality of the thing is exhibited. Hallelujah. I watched three weeks ago when we were doing the realignment. You remember the realignment? The not, not a cuckoo. Cool. When Zimbabwe was manifesting its fleshliness. Hallelujah. As a nation, I understand people drove by 4 a.m. They were leaving for Harare for the match. I'm not saying we're not supposed to go for the match. But what was manifesting first was the godliness in me before the carnality manifested. Hallelujah. Everything which is carnal watandekayo is driven by the devil. The devil has been here longer than you. So never, ever, ever give a foothold to the devil. Don't say, I'm just going to blink away from Jehovah. I'm just going to daydream slightly and take my mind away from Jehovah, but I'll be back. Hallelujah. The devil is awaiting for a gap, a slight opportunity to thwart you, to take away the glory from your life. Hallelujah. When I said the devil is awaiting to end you your evil day, people will look around for those who are sick, for those who are in poverty. When they are okay, they assume that the devil is not lingering around. No. I alluded to that. When you are a good boy, the devil will not bother you for a season. Hallelujah. When you tell yourself that I don't want to be spiritual, I just want to be a good Christian, be to, on, to church on time, when they say let's go and evangelize, I don't evangelize from the burden of my heart, I just hand out flyers, I just go with the group. It's not like the devil is far away from you. He is nigh. Hallelujah. The solution to the devil seem cunnings is a battle. There is no diplomas with the devil. So never give a foothold to the devil. Hallelujah. Never give an opportunity to the devil. Our minds need to be trained. I ministered in BG. I don't know if JRC is over spiritual. We agreed in BG that when we wake up, what is the first thing we get hold of? The cell phone, Andrew. And we look how the battery is, and, and we go to the WhatsApp, and the mind, but and the guy, needs to be trained to keep stayed on Jehovah. 
Hallelujah. It has become a natural and acceptable canal way of starting our day. That you take your cell phone, you plug it on the charger, you look at the messages, you react to the, to the urgent ones, then you go and pray. If you will go and pray. Amen and amen. amen. The mind needs to be trained. The mind needs to be disciplined. When it's staying on Jehovah, the spirit becomes the boss. When things start happening, it is the spirit which responds first before the mind. Hallelujah. When we say we are going to offer a, a, a prophetic seed, what part of your system responds first? The mind calculates I only afford $50. But when the spirit responds first, it said, yes, another opportunity to honor my spiritual parents. And they said, honor is placing a value. When the spirit is in charge, the value will be set. The mind needs to be trained. To remain stayed on Jehovah. Hallelujah. Because of a slight strain from Jehovah, we have invited into our lives permanent calamities. We are now married to wrong husbands. Hallelujah. Om Yumfund is what there is no person who is able to describe how a marriage is supposed to, to be than a person who is in a wrong marriage. Hallelujah. A child of God getting into a wrong marriage, Mazokuda. Hallelujah. It's a lack of training the mind. You are not going to meet a perfect person whom you are going to click with. But by the time you enter into the marriage, that's why they say how many months? Six months so that they will ring. They will sift all the junk from your husband to be, from your wife to be. You get married at 30 years, you have got 30 years of wrong training. 30 years of canal experiences which needs to be weeded out. You can't sit getting into a wrong marriage much couldn't it? Because even if you meet the wrong partner and you discover Suenzili commitment, aren't you? There is nothing impossible with our God. We will weed out those wrong things. Hallelujah. If you are seated next to a young man, tell them that Take care for weeding out of wrong things. And take him for weeding out wrong things. Hallelujah. So, point number one. Allow your mind to be stayed on the Lord. Amen. If he, you are a couple and you see that your husband is now straying away. Ask him. So we Jesus. Are we still stayed on the Lord? Hallelujah. When you are stayed on the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace. There is peace which is good. Angel. Angel Sibaliru Romans. There is peace which is acceptable. But there is what? Perfect peace. I pray that from today, we shall walk in perfect peace. Yeah. Hallelujah. Point number two. Ingredients for turning around hopeless situations. Say it. Say it. Say it. Hallelujah. 
point number two is say it. S A Y I T. Hallelujah. Same. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Same. I said I wanted the title to be seemingly hopeless situation because we don't want to label any situation hopeless. We don't want to graduate any demonic spirit to say I seven zile. No. So use what? You say it. Hallelujah. When you go out ministering them, people confess their experiences. People are full of excuses. People confess their inabilities. And I think it's a wonderful thing. When you confess your inability, you are never supposed to be able to. The Holy Spirit is the one which is supposed to give you ability. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit for come upon you. Hallelujah. But it is wrong to continue to confess your experience. I said earlier on, because of our experience, family experience, our experience of where we come from, that's an experience, Andrew. Velonga velonga kambanga goli. You will never be able to make it. It's what? It's an experience. But we are saying, as an ingredient of turning around a hopeless situation, you have to say it. You need to confess your expectation. Speak your expectations. I am healed. The Lord Jesus provided for my healing at Calvary. I am blessed. I have the mind of Christ. I am a spiritual person. I am a kingdom person. You need to say it, not think it. Psalm. Psalm chapter 18, verse 6. Hallelujah. David, surrounded by the army of Saul, the army of a kingdom, ensnared, he speaks here and says, in my distress, I called upon the Lord, and I cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry, came before him into his ears. Next. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. Hallelujah. Amidst distress, amen, when he saw, was saying, sign your resignation. Hallelujah. David in a cave arrest, surrounded by the armies of Saul. He cried not to Saul. The easier and logical thing was to come out and wave a white flag. After all, David was just a shepherd boy. He hadn't tested how it is to be a king. He wasn't going to lose anything by surrendering. And offering to be a good hub boy for Saul. But he called unto his Lord. And Jehovah heard him. Hallelujah. In your distress, what do you do? When you are now distressed. Distressed, distressed, distressed. 
what do you do? You start confessing. The people who come to see you when you are not sick, they start confessing. Ah, good trick. Hallelujah. We need to speak our expectation, not to confess our unpleasant experiences. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whoever, whoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. This scripture has been read out to us time and time and time and time again. Hallelujah. Whoever shall say and shall not doubt, the saying part, I have overlabored it. I want to speak in the shall not doubt part. Hallelujah. I say from today, you need to speak your expectations. Your what? Expectations. Not your fantasies. Not your hallucinations. Amen and amen. This is a continuation. When your mind is stayed on Jehovah, we are told that he grants you the delights of your heart. Hallelujah. When your mind is stayed on him, on him, I said you need to say it. Say your expectations, not your fantasies, neither your hallucinations. Hallelujah. If I lost you, who point number one? Stay in your mind of Jehovah. Being in the will of Jehovah. Who number two, we may have a problem. Because you may go from here and start speaking your fantasies and your hallucinations. Hallelujah. And start saying, Jehovah, I thank you for a private jet. It's, it's good enough, but isn't it a fantasy? Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Your expectations are supposed to be aligned to God's will over your life problem without doubting could doubt la pana one a lot of us doubt jehovah's will for our lives because our family experience speak louder than the word of god to us because the occurrences in your nation speak louder than jehovah's word in your life. Hallelujah. So you doubt Jehovah's will for your life. And when you doubt Jehovah's will for your life, you don't even know what to expect. You, you survive like a wound. You know a wound will just move from the yeah, migrate to the ear to the eye. There's no order. I pray today you shall go and lay a foundation of the word of God. You shall be able to properly appropriate the word of God in your life. But and the kayo, abo gogo, ilizu ilikangulunkulu, alila skuzi, alila excuse. You should have a certain word of God you are holding on to. Hallelujah. The spirit does not age, does not grow old. And when we say the word of God, it resides in the spirit of a man. Hallelujah. Saying it, scripture says, when you say it and you do not doubt, it doubt begins from doubting what is God's will over your life. 
Do you even know the will of God over your life? I mean, what I just know is, in everything I do, I'm supposed to excel and be successful. I think it covers it. Oh, Angel. Mm. I should excel and be successful. But as you grow in fellowship with Jehovah, in communing with Jehovah, he will speak his will into your life. I don't want to go the direction of the way we pray. Angel. Next level of doubt is before we even say it. We take the things which we are supposed to declare and we weigh them. The mind needs training. When you see yourself weighing option, weighing outcomes, the mind is still what? In charge. Hallelujah. If you declare that I should have a residential stand by June, you will find yourself pausing and starting to calculate the amount which will be needed. And you compromise from Penside, Machula, Country Park, until you get to Mbundani. Because your mind is calculating that for you to make it by June, you should get one way in Mbundani. When the mind is calculating, you are doubting. And Mark chapter 11 is not applicable. You are not saying it. You are doubting and just speaking. Next level of doubting is when you speak it. Hallelujah. When you speak it, you should vocalize your faith. Hallelujah. Vocalize what you want. You may know what to say, but the way you say it should shake hell. Hallelujah. Demons should go and report to the devil that, ah, which one? He's saying he now wants to be married. And he's really saying it. Hallelujah. Because demonic spirits, they are monitoring demonic spirits. You know that. Those who track you and read your mind. Hallelujah. When you are processing things in your mind, demonic spirits will be reading your mind and throwing words. Amen and amen. That's why when you are ministering to someone, I must read a manifested demon and you miss a heartbeat. You will not deliver that person, Angel. But when you miss a heartbeat, you can go and buy a Coke, say no, buy a drink, calm down. Because if you panic, if your mind says, it's like you have spoken with a loudspeaker to demons. They read your mind. Hallelujah. So whatever you are calculating, they are reading your mind. When you now say it, you have to vocalize it with conviction, with authority. So much that they tremble. They get shocked. Hallelujah. That's the next level of doubt. If you say it in a doubting fashion, next year. God, I thank you for my marriage next year. You are doubting. And in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, is not applicable. You will not have whatsoever you desire. Hallelujah. Fourth level of doubting. After saying it, you may unsay it. Hallelujah. After saying it, you may what? You may unsay it. Scripture is saying, and shall not doubt in his heart. You may say it nicely during the service. When you leave the service, I said there are demonic spirits which are monitoring. Angel, they start raising flags of situations and circumstances which makes it impossible for what you said earlier on to be manifested. Hallelujah. You will not unsay it by saying it. 
you unsay it by starting to doubt it in your heart. Hallelujah. When you start meditating, that is it going to be really possible. You are already unsaying it. Hallelujah. Point number two is, say it, that situation which needs to be reversed. Say it. But you can't say it when your mind is not stayed on Jehovah. Hallelujah. Point number three, and my final point. Today we need to go early. I've, it has been a busy week. Point number three. Create and maintain the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Create and maintain the atmosphere conducive for the reversal. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is my last point. Create and maintain an atmosphere conducive for turning around your hopeless situation. What this just means is be spiritual. Be clear cut spiritual. And what and being spiritual is not a gift. You work on to being spiritual. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. 12. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 12. Okay. <clears throat> now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Hallelujah. But under Kayo, healings, prosperity, everything we desire in life was freely given to us. Hallelujah. Why we then tend to labor to receive such is not the desire of Jehovah. It's because we have created around ourselves atmosphere and environments which repel those things. An atmosphere which is not conducive for the working of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. So I'm saying today, create an atmosphere which is conducive. For the turning around of any hopeless situation. When we get into a hopeless situation, we get used to the situation as a coping mechanism. Hallelujah. We look for adapting techniques which will make us comfortable in that situation. But the desire for Jehovah is not for us to be comfortable within the pain but to be without the pain many of us we are so much used to the pain 
We are so much used to the generational cases, to the predictable calamities in our lives, so much that we set aside some funds so that when the calamity strikes, we are cushioned. Today we need to start creating an environment which is conducive for the reversal of any situation which had been deemed hopeless in your life. We see when Jesus, Mark chapter 5, arrived, just stepped foot into the lands of the Gadarenes. Hallelujah. The man who was bound by a legion of demons was roaming the tombs, the mountains, the place they would try to tie him, but they wouldn't. The environment was conducive for him to continue manifesting for the demons, as many as they were, to continue binding onto this person. But the day Jesus stepped without announcement, without a conference poster, just stepped onto the land. Hallelujah. Let's go to Mark. I think it's Mark chapter, Mark chapter 5. We'll start from this one. Let's look at verse 2. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with unclean spirit. Three, four. Let's move to the next one. Next one. Next one. No, verse 6. Verse 6 and 7. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of the most high God, I adjure, you by the, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Jesus carried with him an atmosphere which puts under arrest any situation which had declared itself impossible upon every person's life. Ladies and gentlemen, I pray this morning that around our lives we may carry the grace in an acceptable manner that when we arrive back to our homes, those demonic spirits which are monitoring, which are residents, which are residents within our family members, they will cry out as we step feet into our yards. Hallelujah. We need to create that environment, an environment which has that authority, an environment which makes any situation which was comfortable in our lives to start to shiver. Hallelujah. As I minister today right now, I thank God the devil is a system of coming to attend such services. But I thank God that he is beginning to shiver because someone is beginning to move from their comfort zone. Someone is beginning to move from their complacence. Someone is beginning to move from their conformity and seeking to become a clear-cut spiritual person. Hallelujah. Let's resume our seats as I finish. Amen and amen. <clears throat> we need to stay our mind on Jehovah. We need to say what we expect. And we need to create 
an atmosphere, an environment in our lives which is conducive for every situation which has been hopeless in our life to be turned around, to start to feel the heat, to start to be uncomfortable. Amen and amen. When we are creating this environment, we need them to be clear-cut spiritual. There shouldn't be any ounce of fresh in our day-to-day -day going. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually descended. We are going to offer a prayer point as I finish. Praying for discernment of the spiritual things available to us, for the discernment of situations which have proved to be impossible in our life, Praying for an environment which makes every impossible situation to start to be uncomfortable. I ask the President Worship Sim to come to the front. Shall we rise on our feet even as we pray? Mikatolobo, Shandarabali Kazotolobo, Karla Mandorobo, Shandaraba, Mikatalaba, Shatelebo, she put us like a shikatora on the river in Yados, Librotos like a shikatora on the river in Bisha Mataramatra, Lepetos no coy shikatora in the body of the Shokotora Montre, Lepetos no coy shikatora in the Shokotora in the Shokoto, Lepatos like a shikatora by the Bibi, Lapatos like a shikatora. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! This is how we are going to pray. I said earlier on, many times when we sense that this situation is going to prove to be difficult, we create our own comfort zones. We need to create an environment which will make that situation uncomfortable to remain clinging to us. There are people we know that this situation I have gone into a, a alliance with it. I have agreed to have a mutual relationship with it. That for as long as I am not praying to break your hold upon my life, you will not inflict me anymore. If you are such a person, you need to pray that an atmosphere be created right now which creates discomfort for that situation. There are some of us, we just see the outcome of possibilities of presence of impossible situations in our lives. We need them to pray that we may discern situations in our lives which we may not be aware of, but which are now clung and comfortable 
in our lives. But alas, we think that it's business as usual. Pray for a discerning spirit that you may identify such situation. Because you can't say it when you don't know it. You can't speak to a situation when you don't know it. Hallelujah. Then there is a group of people. Your mind is not yet stayed on the Lord. The teaching of keeping your mind stayed on the Lord is actually foreign. You are living the way you like. You didn't know the Lord Jesus. You are at another level. I want to invite you that you come to the front. Don't wait for the conference. And I will pray with you as you receive the Lord. That act of coming to the front and receiving the Lord will unshackle a lot of chains in your life. We will automatically create an environment where demonic spirits may not thrive. Hallelujah. I once said, demonic spirit, they want a comfortable, which is an environment which is comfortable for their thriving. Hallelujah. Some of us, we have allowed our bodies to be a retirement home for some silly demonic spirits. Hallelujah. We then need to go a level higher and make every demonic spirit uncomfortable. As children of God, we do not get possessed by demons, but we get manipulated. Hallelujah. They come and manipulate and they go because they can't stay. They come at a point of weakness and manipulate and go. Hallelujah. When they come back, they are telling themselves that it's their house, aren't they? But we want when they come back this time around to find the house on another level. To find that house refurbished without any ounce of grayness or darkness. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray that we may discern the issues in our lives which are proving to be impossible and are putting us in a hopeless situation. We are going to pray that we divorce some behaviors, some elements which we had entered into agreement with them. Hallelujah. We divorce them today because with the devil there is no diplomas. The devil may be patient with you until they drive you into your evil day. And when you enter into an agreement with demonic spirit, you will be driven into your evil day without being equipped, without the whole armor of Jehovah. And you won't stand that day. Hallelujah. We shall worship as we pray. Oh, thank you for revelation. Thank you for revelation. That even as I possess my possession, oh God, that I may step into my place, uh, that I will be able to say and to declare, that I may fix my relationship with you, oh God. That is, I say, as yes, I say, as yes, I say it, oh God. That is, I receive all things, my Father. I may receive it from your word. Shakadibiri, <laughs> I call on you, God, so to do. I command you, God, shake the alarm. My God, to do. I command you, so to do. I call on you, God, the alarm. My God, so to do. I command you, so to do. I command you, so to do. I call on you, God, 
I had made a call for those who want to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I will give you another opportunity to come. Amen and amen. As we close the meeting today, I want to encourage you that as you go through this week, challenge yourself that you create an environment and an atmosphere where demonic spirits, where infirmities and inflictions will be uncomfortable. Hallelujah. Live as a spiritual person. As you go through this week, say your expectations. Speak to the situation which you want reversed. As you go through this week, train your mind to remain stayed on Jehovah. Hallelujah. Train your mind to remain stayed on Jehovah. As you go about this week, as you look at yourself, whatever situation which is not impressing you, be it lack, be it your social life, be it your health, every situation which you had rendered impossible, I am here to tell you now that it was impossible according to your level and your revelation. But there is a God with whom there is nothing which is impossible. Hallelujah. There is a God yeah. whose end is not short, whose end is long enough to reach unto our situation. There is a God who is not dumb. There is a God who looks at that situation Hallelujah. And smile. Because when you are faced with a situation which can only be solved by kingdom arsenal, the glory will be given to him. And Jehovah is looking for such opportunities. Scripture says his eyes run to and fro upon the face of the earth. Looking for an individual whom he may show himself great through. So as you go home, take that situation, present it before Jehovah, and say, my father, prove yourself great by turning around this hopeless situation. Hallelujah. We serve a God who stays on our side, a God who never forsakes us. We serve a God, the psalmist write and say, let Israel say, yet the Lord be not on our side. Our enemies could have swallowed us up alive when their anger rose against us. Hallelujah. You are alive today. Because Jehovah is on your side. You don't need to continue suffering. Just say it. Just create the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't you believe it? Over the earth, God, believe it, I say, believe it.
glory be Father, even for your love and kindness to us, which is more than life itself. My Father, I thank you for choosing us, my Father, and for elevating us, my Father. My Father, I thank you even for your purpose upon our lives. 
I thank you, my Father, even for everything which is in store for us. Father, we bless you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, even for today's message. I pray, my Father, that even as each and every individual goes today, Jehovah Lord, they shall leave this place with a certain level of divine authority. My Father, when they shall go into every area, their workplaces, their house and their communities, my Father, people shall see a change upon their lives. My Father, I thank you today that even as we prepare for the conference, we shall not come to the conference presumptively, my Father, but we shall come with expectancy. For we know that we serve a living God. We serve a God who wins a war without a battle. We serve a God with whom nothing is impossible. Father, I pray this afternoon in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and everybody says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I will hand over to Mama for some announcements. Amen. 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 We thank Pastor Takawira for that word and season. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, our father, he, he, he sent a message. He says he erred by failing to include as the theme of the conference, rediscovering divine passion. Okay. Hallelujah. So that's also part of the, it is a communion of wonders. Amen. But you're also rediscovering your divine passion. Amen. That which you lost. Hallelujah. You are rediscovering. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, he says that um, uh, I think media will have to edit the adverts. Amen. So that when we post, we post the edited adverts. Amen. So I'm sure media is going to do that for us as soon as possible. Amen. Um, we need everyone. Did he says we need everyone who's on Facebook or other platform to repost the four adverts. Amen. Remember, we have the youth uh, and varsity encounter. We have the men's summit. We have the breakfast meeting. And then we have the conference. Amen. So all those four. If we can at least uh, repost them five times, either on Facebook or in any of the platforms. Amen. He says, so far we have less than 10 people, but, the, uh, but by the end of today, we need the whole church to do so. Amen. I know you are going to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. And we also need to finish off the flyers that we have. Amen that by Tuesday we are done with evangelism, amen, so that on Wednesday we prepare ourselves, hallelujah, we don't want to happen onto the conference, but we want to come prepared and ready, amen, so to, by tomorrow, let, let, let everything that you have be, be, be given out, amen, we evangelize with power, we evangelize with passion, amen, so that by Tuesday we are done, and on Wednesday we are getting our spirits prepared, we are getting ourselves physically prepared. Amen. Because you don't want to come to the conference tired. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, there is also going to be cleaning of the auditorium. Amen. So we ask that please come so that we, we, we help with cleaning and with whatever needs to be done in preparation for the conference. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And welcome, Auntie Sandra, from the Jobic Assembly. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Um, our meeting ends here today. Go and have a spirit-filled week. Amen. Even as you prepare for the conference. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. God richly bless you. Hallelujah.
Kiri. From the 14th to the 17th of December, morning services at 9 a.m. and evening services at 5 p.m. On Saturday the 16th at 3 p.m. and on Sunday the 17th at 9 a.m. for our special communion service. The sick will be healed and all demonic oppressions shall be destroyed. And your long-awaited breakthrough will come to pass. For more information, visit our website at www.jubileeinriveroflife.org. See you there. It's time now for men to arise. Let all those men who have no interest in the kingdom, let them remain behind. I am not here to come and make any truces with anybody. God put me on this planet to take over, not to be taking sides with anybody. I am here to declare and decree to you that true men will arise. You don't have to agree with it, but true men will arise out of this conference.